Hi everyone! Today we're going to be talking about my favorite food, which is chocolate. Chocolate, aside from being delicious and so much fun to put in all different types of food, is also full of so much science. So let's get to learning. Let's start by talking about what even is chocolate in the first place. So chocolate is derived from the cacao plant, which has beans in it, and these beans are collected and fermented and cleaned and roasted and ground and all sorts of other stuff, all to get out your cocoa solids, cocoa butter, um, and a couple other products. And all of these different products that come out from the roasting, grinding, cleaning, separation of cacao beans can be turned either into like how you buy cocoa powder, which is just the cocoa solids, you can buy cocoa butter in the store, or they can be combined with sometimes additional sweeteners or other flavorings to make chocolate that we like to eat with all different characteristics. While roasting, the most important step in processing cacao beans is really the roasting. The flavor profile of the chocolate will depend on, be really dependent on the roasting temperature and roasting the beans allows them to undergo the Maillard reaction. You may have heard of this before, um, it's mentioned like a lot on cooking shows sometimes. The Maillard reaction is a very complex organic chemistry reaction where sugars and proteins undergo a complex chemical reaction to create really deep and complicated molecules resulting in usually browning and a really deep complicated flavor. So if you think about meat, when you sear meat, it develops a nice brown crust on it, it develops a really deep, rich flavor and aroma. That is also the Maillard reaction happening. But since the chemical composition of meat and chocolate are pretty different, luckily meat and chocolate don't taste the same, but they are both equally delicious in their own spheres. So roasting is a really important part of the chocolate process that can impact the entire flavor of your chocolate bar. Next, let's talk about cocoa butter. So cocoa butter is a fat. Welcome back to our lovely, lovely triglyceride that we can just never leave behind. Remember a triglyceride is a, or is it, is a glycerol molecule with three fatty acid chains attached to it. And in this case, cocoa butter is made out of three different fatty acids. So you have palmitic, oleic, and I think it's like steric, Stary, st I don't, I don't, I'm gonna say it's called steric. I know how to spell it, I don't know how to say it. Um, and these are different fatty acids that are all made up of different numbers of carbon. So remember, the black guys are carbon here and they can stretch on and on and on, multiple carbons and things like that. So the difference between like oleic acid versus palmitic acid versus steric acid has to do with the number of carbons in the chain and then whether or not it is an unsaturated or saturated fatty acid. So right now I'm showing you a saturated fatty acid. Every single carbon is singly attached to enough hydrogens or another carbon atom to make it happy. But if there weren't enough hydrogens and carbons had to be doubly attached or have a double bond between them, that would be an unsaturated fatty acid. So cocoa butter has a mix of saturated fatty acids and unsaturated, ugh, unsaturated fatty acids. And those unsaturated fatty acids, remember, are the ones that don't stack together very well and make fats a little bit more liquidy, like what's found in olive oil. And that's what will control the melting temperature of chocolate and why chocolate always melts in your mouth. And chocolatiers will actually combine different ratios of fatty acids in order to make a chocolate that has the best mouthfeel or is the most pleasant eating experience. That's, I think that's really cool. <laughs> so now that we've talked about what exactly goes into chocolate, the process of getting the beans into a chocolate form, what cocoa powder is, what cocoa butter is. Let's talk a little bit about tempering chocolate. And this is something you may have heard of on like baking or cooking shows because the judges are always complaining that the temper on a contestant's chocolate isn't correct. And so tempering chocolate is heating and cooling it at certain temperatures to achieve the best crystal structure. So the crystal structure has to do with the way all of those fats and other cocoa solids are stacking together to make an overall product. There are actually six different crystal structures that chocolate can stack, like the chocolate molecules can stack in six different ways. I did not know that. Only one of those is considered favorable for chocolate making, and that is something that has a melting temperature near our body temperatures. It is very shiny and it has a good snap. This is the ideal chocolate to use in a chocolate bar. You don't want 
a chocolate bar that's gonna melt at a really low temperature because it's just gonna turn to liquid while sitting in a room. You want it to melt when you eat it. So to achieve that temperature, you have to get heat and cool the chocolate and have it be around 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit to achieve that perfect temper. You may have also opened the chocolate bar before and seen that it's covered in white stuff and thought to yourself, oh no, my chocolate has molded. It's actually not mold. It is called chocolate bloom and it can occur in one of two ways. So you either have sugar bloom, which is when water or moisture comes into contact with the sugar in the chocolate and it starts to break down and change the sugar content in the chocolate bar, thus changing its texture. And also fat bloom, which is where the fats become a little unstable and change composition or structure in response to fluctuating storage conditions. So if an entire shipment of chocolate bars is shipped and it doesn't get stored at the right storage conditions, it can result in chocolate bloom. Your chocolate is still edible. Again, it's not mold. However, it might have a little bit different flavor and texture due to the chemical composition changes that happened during that bloom. Chocolate that comes from different regions will end up having different flavor profiles or textures, all because of the ingredients that are put into it. So for example, European chocolate is required by law to have a higher percentage of cacao solids than American chocolate. So by default, that means, in simple math, that means that American chocolate with having less cacao solids is gonna have more sugar to make up the composition of a chocolate bar. European chocolates also have a high, usually have a higher fat content due to the dairy used or the cocoa butter used and will have a resulting different texture than American chocolates. Either one you choose is always gonna be delicious though. And then you may have heard about the differences between like you have white chocolate, which is just solid cocoa butter, milk chocolate, which is gonna have more, a higher sugar and dairy percentage, and you have dark chocolate, which has a higher cacao solid percentage. And dark chocolate is typically considered healthier due to the antioxidant properties in cacao solids, but it still is really high in calories. So it's you can have a tiny bit each day and still get the health benefits from it. There's also been some evidence that dark chocolate can contain cadmium or lead. Um, these are two heavy metals that are toxic to your body. So it's just probably a generally good idea to limit your intake anyway. Although limiting your intake of chocolate is really hard because chocolate is really delicious. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I'm getting to learn a little bit more about chocolate science and what even is chocolate. And next time you're at the store, you can start to analyze all the different like 70% cacao, 90% cacao, all those different labels. And now you know what they mean in terms of science, which is super fun. Today's fun fact that we're going to break is that it takes 400 cacao, oh, cacao, beans, cacao beans to make one pound of chocolate. That's a lot of beans. <laughs> Please be sure to rate that comment in the, oh my gosh, rate that fun fact in the comments below. Please like this video, share it with your friends, go eat some chocolate, subscribe to my channel, uh, follow me on Instagram. I post updates about when videos are getting posted and other fun sciencey adventures on the side. Um, I continue to post videos on YouTube every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey. Different regions have different chocolates that taste different. Oh very concise sentence and that's content and that's <laughs>